The 2021 P4G Seoul Summit, the Green Futures Session on Green Finance, is being held under the theme of the role of finance, fostering green recovery in the post-COVID-19 era. Well, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce the host of the evening. Chairman Eun Sung Soo of the Financial Services Commission will deliver his opening remarks. Welcome to the 2021 P4G Seoul Summit Special Session on Green Finance. COVID-19 is not an individual's problem, nor a region's or a country's problem. It is the whole humanity's problem. Likewise, climate change is everyone's problem. In this regard, P4G puts emphasis on the value of partnership across all sectors. Some countries achieve carbon neutrality. The climate crisis will not be solved if other countries keep emitting carbon. In short, global cooperation is crucial to fight the climate crisis. Furthermore, we will actively support developing nations through partnership with international organizations like GCF and GGGI. With that in mind, I would like to introduce some of our keynote speakers. We have three keynote speakers for today. It was just over five years ago in Paris that the international community reaffirmed its political will to ensure that all nations have access to adequate financial resources to support their efforts against climate change. Acknowledging this responsibility, developed nations made a pledge to mobilize $100 billion annually for developing countries to support their action on mitigation and adaptation, a goal that was to be achieved by 2020. This promise, which has not yet been fulfilled, this commitment to climate action is part of a broader trend in the private sector. At least a fifth of the world's largest 2,000 public companies, many of which are World Economic Forum partners, are working to meet the net zero targets by mid-century. Governments are also showing the way. In April, President Biden pledged the US would halve a greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. President Xi Jinping pledged China would peak carbon emissions by 2030. And the EU, the UK, and other major G20 economies, including Japan and the Republic of Korea, have committed to achieve net zero emissions by 2050. Let's consider what's happening in Egypt, a country that relied on fossil fuel to power its towns and villages. IFC and other lenders mobilized private investment worth $2 billion to finance the Ben Bam solar park for a total of two gigawatts. This is impact. Under the overarching theme of the role of finance and fostering green recovery in the COVID-19, post-COVID-19 era, we have had the keynote sessions and now we move on to the panel discussions. We have six different panelists who will be discussing three main subtopics. Our panel discussion will be led by Mr. Frank Riesberman, the Director General of the Green, Global Green Growth Institute. And also, we have six panelists from the government, international organizations, and the private sector. Tonight, we shine the spotlight on green finance. And we are convinced that this can only happen if all parties in the financial sector, including private companies, asset managers, banks such as the Korean National Development Bank, insurance companies, institutional investors, including pension funds, asset managers, policymakers, regulators, all of them must come together to achieve those goals. Because we do need a total and rapid transformation of the energy sector. We need to ramp up renewables, we need to ramp down coal. First, I'd like to introduce Yannick Blemarek, the executive director of the Green Climate Fund. Two approaches are being 
pursued in order to remove these barriers, market fixing and market shipping. Market fixing basically relies on price signal to shift finance toward climate-friendly investment. Market shipping intervenes at the level of sector policies. It includes measures directed both at the demand and supply side of green market transformation. And most of this effort rely on a combination of instruments that leverage the strength of market fixing and market uh, blending. In each case, we have to come with a unique portfolio meeting the unique requirement of each country. Now I'd like to pose uh, an opening question, a scoping question to the five remaining panelists. And the question is this, why green finance while we are in the middle of a COVID-19 pandemic? Mr. Thank you. Uh, Hello everyone, I am Tong Gali, Chairman of Korea Development Bank. Let me start by saying how delighted I am to join the P4G Summit on Green Financing Finance together with world-renowned dignitaries and experts. I hope that P4G Seoul Summit, slated for two days, will be highly successful and produce fruitful results based on today's discussion. The COVID-19 pandemic has taught us about the importance of the environment. And reminded us the mighty power of the environment and realized that there is no growth. Global economic rules are now changing. The pandemic shines even more light on the quality of light and re-evaluating global climate and environmental threats. From the economic point of view, the value of going green is all the of the companies. In light of this, green finance, such as responding to climate change and providing financial support for the environment. Let's move on to assessing how the global market for green investment is today. Our goal is to help companies and organizations disclose decision-useful, climate-related financial information clearly and consistently through existing financial reporting. Support for the TCFD recommendations has been driven by four main factors, investor demand, green recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, regulatory developments, and good business practices. From the beginning, the TCFD framework was always meant to be a foundation upon which standards would be built to ensure consistency and comparability in disclosure and avoid the fragmentation that could yield less decision-useful information. Given how quickly momentum around the TCFD recommendations is moving, the support for the TCFD has shifted from purely voluntary to increasingly compulsory. This fragmentation is sometimes viewed as a barrier to investment where asset managers are looking for consistent, comparable, and verifiable ESG data to make decisions. In order to effectively measure transition to net zero, and other ESG factors for short, medium, and long-term risk assessment, market participants need to have accurate data. Data has been an important part of measuring transition because when you have data, you can understand the actual impact. Effectively managing ESG risks and transition to net zero requires understanding the vulnerability and resilience of each company and their respective sector. For example, climate risks vary from sector to sector because transition and physical risks from climate change do not uniformly impact companies, countries, sectors, or geographies. We believe it is essential for enhanced dialogue and coordination at the international level in order to ensure that the steps being taken on ESG matters remain in line with global market practices and regulatory frameworks. Well, Mr. Kim, as an institutional investor, you have a lot of experience in this area, of course. And the first question for you is, what role should institutional investors play in accelerating green investment? Up until now, when it comes to environment-related information disclosure, the government and the international community have made various required to disclose environment-related information as a mandatory requirement. And ESG-related disclosure is increasingly becoming mandatory until 2030. National Pension Services is an institution investor. Since 2015, 
National Pension Services has developed its own ESG evaluation mechanism, and since last year, we have reflected the result of ESG mechanism for sharing ESG information. And when it comes to consignment fund management companies, we make sure they submit responsible. Report for responsible investment since July last year for certain equities in Korea. We are working with consignment fund management companies that, that in a way that they submit responsible investment reports, and we will be expanding. So next, we turn to our second topic of the night, uh, and that is that public financial institutions play an important role in financing green. Uh, green investment, uh, not only by directly providing the funding, but also by bringing the private investors for, to the table. In 2020, the European Investment Bank provided 24.2 billion to fight climate change. Obviously, this is not enough. Unlike other great economic transitions, in this instance, the technologies are still not yet there. We cannot simply replicate and scale up existing innovation from our neighbors. No, new technologies need to emerge, grow to scale, and be attractive for developed and developing countries. Policy financing is extremely important. 2021 is the year in which the Paris Agreement under UNFCC is to get and implement its LED as the transition to a low-carbon economy is to change the overall economic and industrial structure. It takes much more capital input, patience and time than entering a specific strategic industry. As massive patient capital is attracting private capital and successfully leading offshore wind power generation projects led by policy financial institution, the European Offshore Wind Power Generation project is positioned as the most representative sector where private companies and financial institutions only participate. In case of Korea, the green industries, including offshore wind power, hydrogen production and transportation, are faced with challenges such as immature market yet to be commercialized green technology, making it difficult for private capital to be invested. For areas where private sector finds it difficult to invest, high-risk assets such as subordinate debt can be provided. Private capital can be created. The market and achieve innovations in July 2020, the Korean government announced the Korean New Deal policy to overcome the economic crisis caused by the pandemic. This is national development strategy that focuses not only on relief and recovery to overcome the crisis, but also on reform to lead the global economy and realize green recovery as a way supporting the Korean Green New Deal policies and strengthening financial support necessary to build the essential infrastructure for the green economy, KDB implemented the Korean New Deal program for a national transformation in January 2021. Through this program, KDB plans to finance 25 trillion won in Korean Greece on May 27 successfully. As Korea's leading policy financial institution, KDB will continue to provide various financial support to surmount challenges posed by the pandemic through third and final topic of our panel discussion, and we'll turn back to Mr. Yannick Glemarek of GCF. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought us to a tipping point or a turning point in our fight against climate change. The way we recover from it will either entrench our dependence on fossil fuels, or will enable us to accelerate effort toward the net zero emission uh, economies. And today, with COVID-19, we need financial innovation too. The, uh, we need financial innovation such as green bond that was mentioned by Mr. Lee, such as uh, transition bonds, such as resilience bonds, such as green guarantees or uh, debt for climate swap to enable developing countries to finance their green economic stimulus measures without increasing their debt burden. And tonight we discussed what is happening around green finance. Europe, where they have an EIB that is making huge amounts of money available. Countries like Korea that have NPS and KDB that can make resources available. I see a lot of progress to implement a Green New Deal and to move towards carbon neutrality. 
I hope you agree with me that this was a fascinating discussion, and I hope you agree that we should thank all panelists with a warm round of applause. Thank you all. We do have a couple more uh, speakers planned for our session. The role of finance is absolutely key. Uh, it's an ongoing task, and it requires three uh, changes in paradigm. And uh, finance can certainly uh, contribute to make this uh, transition a process where you have transparency, where you have participation, coordination with all the actors that I mentioned. It is important to think of this transition as having distribution of challenge. We know that climate change affects poor uh, countries first and also affects poor households in rich countries first. So we need to think of uh, uh, a challenge uh, in this transition to find the ways in which you will have uh, this uh, transition uh, preserving uh, social balance, preserving uh, the poor households income and employment in uh, rich countries. So there needs to be a consideration for how Yes, many uh, speakers have pointed out that the green, green transition cannot be achieved by government efforts alone. All stakeholders, including financial community and businesses, uh, must join the efforts. The Korean government is well aware of this need and pledged its support for TCFP as the eighth government in the world to do so. In addition, along with 112 financial institutions in Korea, the government has declared its participation in various international initiatives such as TCFP. And carbon information discovery and We should also remember that our common goal is to overcome climate crisis and create a sustainable financial ecosystem and introduce inclusive green recovery so that no one is left behind in the process of achieving carbon neutrality. It has to be a common goal for all mankind and we should always... Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the close of the 2021 P4G Seoul Summit, the Green Future Session on Green Finance.